Association Book Club. My goodness, very exciting. And we're discussing Andre Kirchhoff and his novel Grey Bees. So thank you, yes, thank you, Livia and Mark. And then we have some wonderful surprise guests. We have Monsieur Christopher Matthews, who is truly a great publisher. He publishes Kirchhoff, but he also Solzhenitsyn, Christopher, was that right? That many moons ago you published Solzhenitsyn, didn't you? Well, and all the other Russians and Ukrainians who... <laughs> is that... I'm many, of them. <laughs> many of them. <laughs> many of them. <laughs> and then we also have Katerina Elenberg, who also happens to keep bees in Brixton. Oh, true. So there might be some... Maybe we'll get some more bee insights. <laughs> and we have Carol Welsh, who was at Scepter for many years. Um, and published Nephew and others. So thank you for coming. If you find something that you love, personal thing, this will get you through all sorts of troubles. And what comes across is his fondness. His love of the bees. The bees. Yeah. And at one point he, he, he makes a bed, he puts blankets over the hat of boxes, and he lies on the boxes just feeding the honey. And what wonderful touches. And there's that warmth. Throughout, the exactly. Yeah, there's some caring about it. Yeah. But also, the friendship between the two of them, how it developed, considering yeah. they were enemies when the village was yeah. hiding and the like. And then they become. Care for each other. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 so yeah. beautiful, very poetic, dear Roger. Actually, superb shoes. And he cherished those ones. Yeah. And very tiny. The interesting thing, although Pasha is kind of a frenemy, it's translated yeah, just yeah, yeah. beautifully into our translation. By, mm -hmm. you know, sort of a, there is a tragedy in the game, or shall I say, as the poets engage, mm -hmm. our life because his wife left him. With, with and the famous ant dress. On the bee level, yeah, yeah. I, was, I meant to ask Andre whether there was any. Um, any substance in his healing of lying on top of bees? I mean, does bees he do keep bees? Himself? No, I don't think no. he does keep bees. He but it seems to be quite a bit about it. But yeah. um, I mean, we know they heal in lots of other ways, including mm. the sting is sometimes used as a healing yeah. property in propolis yeah. and everything. But um, I never asked him that, and it's been it's been a couple of years. Yeah. Since <laughs> it's I've really interesting that there were all these trailers of, about all something that it was something, mm. but, but but throughout it was totally you know that element of humanity was. Yeah. Was it was really lovely to read that because. So I think you can tell it when you're reading it that he is the kind of writer who writes uh, what feels like it's really fun to write. <laughs> he's enjoying he's himself. He's always enjoying himself yeah. as he's yeah, writing, yeah, yeah, yeah. and that mm. comes across quite a lot when you're reading it, and also when you're translating it. It's very mm. fun, whimsical stuff to translate. This is going back again to what you were saying about him just being the most fantastic of the sort of writers, mm. and so it's every man in his own shape or form in the character throughout his book somewhere yeah, it's somewhere there somewhere. Yeah, yeah. the Leo yeah. is just think of the incredible tall fellow of that two tall lions in there yeah. how you should yeah. write yeah. bigger and taller yeah. 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 it's not just the skinny people <laughs> <laughs> it's true <laughs> yeah. 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 and it says yeah. everything feels grey and cold and then he moves to this like not more of it's like love affair to his like real yeah. and lots of borscht dressed. Yeah, but then like the truly amazing thing is like crossing the enemy line in yeah. Crimea. And yeah. I feel like that's almost like an empathetic step that the novelist can take you there. Mm. So it's really mm. I, I feel it, it would be easy to imagine a kind of less of it played in one line. Yeah. One side yeah. of the front line. Um, but kind of crossing that line just mm. opens yeah. it up so much. And then yeah, like even like the like the description of Crimea, as someone said, is still so beautiful. Oh, it's like paradise. Yeah, yeah he really sensual. is like in paradise. And yes. to have that, and it'd be very, Heaven. it'd be very tempting to to turn that on its head and be like, no, it's Russia loves to write Crimea. I'm going to try and paint it yeah. that as a way. But well, I think all of those claims of like you know, feeling for centuries the sound mm. of the enemy and stuff like that. And what does this like book that. tell you that you're not getting from newspapers oh. and? Yeah. Everything else. You get a very clear picture mm. of what life in what we may loosely call the Donbass mm. area is, which is to say that you have people like these two eccentric figures. That is what life is like in so many villages mm. in eastern Ukraine. It's not just 
villages which have been demolished. This whole town, this whole city have been bombed to shreds by the Russian army since then. And Andre, who lives under, you would have to accept, the daily threat of drones, nobody knows where a drone is going to land next, or bombs that are going to arrive next. He's extremely brave, as they all are. And I think his picture of this country, in which he has been living almost the whole of his life, is an essential um, piece of evidence for our time. Oh, lovely. Thank you so much.